Here's today's guest by the numbers. 14 years on Broadway, nine big musicals, three classy revivals, two stinky flops, four Tony nominations, but forget all of that because right now she's giving a career best performance as a lovelorn farmer's wife in the Bridges of Madison County. Please welcome Kelly O'Hara. Hello, Kelly. Oh, hi. There's no audience. Oh, okay. uh, you, you look gorgeous as <laughs> okay, always. You, I, I just don't know. Do you just yes, wake up is, like this? This is how I wake up. Yep. <laughs> this is what I do when I'm milking the baby. And uh, no, uh, I have really nice people who help me. So. Everybody needs a team. Oh my gosh. Boy, it takes a village. This show is stunning. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful show. Thank you. Are you feeling beautiful in the middle of all this beauty? I just feel really, really heavy and rich about it all. I just, I love the score. I love the show. I love the character I get to play. Um, I feel, I'm, I'm a little fearful. I won't ever have a moment like this again because it feels, I feel that grateful for uh -huh. it. So, yeah, no, I'm enjoying it and I'm kind of just uh, trying to savor every moment. There's something about you and Stephen Pasquale. There, there are moments in this show that are like, the Olympics of Broadway <laughs> acting and singing and chemistry. Yes. Like when the two of you are doing some of these Jason Robert Brown mm. beautiful duets, it's just like, I, I don't know if I've ever seen that type of passion, you know what I mean? Like the, like the connection you two have. You know, what is I, that? What I, is that? I, I don't know. Bottle. I mean, I think that things fell, somehow fell, in, fell into place in a way that that is kind of unreal. It feels that way for me as a singer, having sung a bunch of different scores and different uh, types of music. Jason said he wanted to ride a Traviata, his Traviata, and he, boy, he just put his guts in there. And, you yeah. know, when he walked in the room with those songs, they just kind of sung themselves. I'm not kidding. I know that sounds, but they, he just played them, and all of a sudden, Muh! there's tears coming out of your eyes. So, um, and Steve's voice, uh, there, there's nobody singing like Steve. Um, so every single night, I've never really had the rush of adrenaline of not worrying for a second about what's going to come out of my mouth, just doing it. Hmm. I've never felt that way. Mm -hmm. there's, there's the technical aspect of it has kind of gone out the window while being there all the time. I don't know how to explain it. Hmm. Now this character, Francesca, I, I, I was actually a big fan of the movie. I, I was like, when I, I remember when I first saw the movie, it's like one of my, my go-to, like, nice curl up in a ball yeah. and have a moment movies. Yeah, I get it. Uh, is this also a movie for you? I know it, it's funny, though, it was a book. A lot of people made fun of the book yeah. when it first came out. Yeah. And it became this very acclaimed movie and everyone was surprised, like, oh, it works yeah, yeah. sort of in different mediums. I, th so, I think I think being a, in the screenplay, which was re taken from the book, the source material, I read the book when I was a teenager and I thought it was so sordid and amazing, you know. Um, I have not reread it, although we recorded it, Steve and I, for an audio version. Oh, really? For, and I was turning red in the booth, you know, just, just reading all the, mm, he was hard and sweaty, and his <laughs> nipples, you know. And, um, and uh, I was, I was by myself, thankfully. But um, no, the, the movie I didn't really, I didn't see, but I went and revisited several of the scenes so I uh -huh. could see her and the magic of her. And um, I know that it was very different because it's so interior, and it's the t it's the two of them, and it's a lot of dialogue, a lot of, yeah. lot of we can't do that on the stage. You know, it's very different. Our world's inhabited by a lot of other people, mm -hmm. which I think is so great. Um, but I I knew it should be it would be beautifully musicalized because so much of it is internal, so much of it is secret, mm -hmm. and what do you do with that? You sing it. Mm -hmm. You know, so that for that reason, I think it works beautifully. I actually heard that. You may have started this whole project, the Bridge of Madison County. Was this your idea? It was not my idea. Did you buy the rights to it? I did not buy the rights okay, to that, it. That's, 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 that's interesting. Um, because why would have I I have bought the rights for, to, to play an Italian woman and thought that would work? <laughs> well, it um, does. <laughs> no, what happened was they called Marsha Norman uh -huh. and said we're thinking about trying to get a, even another life out of this book. Right. You know, Robert Waller. Yeah. You know, really, wow. <laughs> what was he like? I know he uh, came to the show on opening night. You know, he like, wrote this book in nine days, this right, man. And yeah. 60 million copies later, a film, a successful film, now a musical. Um, and then he, he had an affair. Uh, and, the, and then he had a real life affair yeah, after I, the book I, later yeah, really? on. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I didn't get to know him very much. I, he's, um, but I think he was very pleased. But your question was, did yeah. I start this? Um, they gave it to Marsha Norman. Marsha and Jason had just worked together on something and talked about maybe writing something else. So she took it to Jason and said, what do you think about this as your La Traviata? And he, then they came to me, which I, I still don't really know why they thought, maybe because of the type of singing, because mm -hmm. I'm you know more classically. Although when he first started writing it, he didn't write it with as much of the um, 
Italian classical mm, stuff until mm -hmm. I said, if you're going to write it for me, please do. Uh -huh. And then he showed up with things like To Build a Home, and, and I knew I was, I was in. And, we, and then we went and found um, our producers, and I asked Bart to join. Okay, so you were sort of early. Early, but early I, it process. wasn't my idea, but then I was early in the process. Right. How's that, um, that leading man of yours? How's, how's, <laughs> are, there, are women throwing panties at him, or what's, what's happening? Yeah, it's getting, uh, yeah, it's starting to get bad. <laughs> um, it's, uh, he's what you think he is. He's pretty alpha male, pretty amazing, pretty testosterone-y and sexy, and extremely naturally talented. Uh -huh. Like, didn't study this, but somehow just stands there and is natural and real. Um, we've known each other for since the almost right when I moved here. So 15, 14 right. years. Um, people ask us, you know, about the chemistry. I can't really explain it except that we're completely free to, and I'm, I've learned in this business that the more you give, give the audience and the more they think, the better off your show is going to be. So uh -huh. we're just going for it, you know, uh -huh. comfortably. There's not an uncomfortable bone in our bodies about um, trying to seem real. Yeah. Trying to make it work. You famously had a nude scene in Dracula. Was it famous? We, uh, it was famous. It was, it was famous <laughs> on Broadway.com. But now, like, you, you have a little sort of naked moment. You're sort like, of. And look at you. You look amazing. Well, like, I'm, thank you, you. Did you want to say, like, look, my, my post-baby body, look at me. Oh, God. I wanted to, <laughs> you know, rip somebody's head off for having the idea of it. About, but then I understood the moment of, what I do know is that I look in that mirror, which is not a mirror, by the way. Right. We had a mirror for a second. I said, take the mirror away. I'm much more liberated if I'm, if I'm imagining a woman like myself, who has been um, asleep for a little bit, having had a baby myself just recently, and thinking, is this still useful in a way that is to someone like that man? You know, could this still be desirable? And what that does to your mind, does it break your heart? Does it make you excited? Does it, you know? And so that moment is actually quite liberating, as, is, as it was in Dracula. It mm. became very liberating for me. I don't know why. Um, it's a powerful thing if you choose to do it, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, can we talk about the Tony Award? Is that annoying? Uh, everyone, <laughs> now, I, I'm sure it gets annoying for you because <laughs> you've been nominated four oh, times yeah. for very deserving nominations. Maybe some of them should have been wins. I mean, like, but this, you know, it's just—it's sort of like the the business, right? It's, yeah, it's yeah, what it is. yeah. What does a win do? I mean, and I, you know, like a year later, I actually always find myself going like, "Wait, who who won?" You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess it really does, of course, matter. And and I keep thinking, um, I'll just be honest with you. When people say it to me, like at the stage door or something, talk about, "Oh, this year, maybe," and I say, "What?" Because I'm one of those people <laughs> that just doesn't even want to put it in the air. I don't want to. Uh -huh. um, what I do know is that. What a win would do for me, uh, if I ever get one, is there are certain people I want to say thank you to for certain things, uh -huh. and that's really what it's about for me. Um, do, I don't think that my thea theatrical career um, could be more than I feel like it is right now for myself, mm -hmm. for my heart. I feel like I'm right where I want to be um, because I'm trying to juggle that with having a family, so I feel like it's all balanced. Um, so really, f um, the gratitude factor would be um, important to me, um, and it's a, it's a wonderful thing, and I applaud everybody who's who's gotten to be there, and I wonder what it feels like. But other than that, I mean, what, I'm not going to stop doing this if it doesn't happen. Do you even remember who beat you? <laughs> Hell yes. Um, I mean, I was always up against Patty Lapone or Audra McDonald every they, time. They, yeah, every yeah. time, I was up against Patty twice, although Lashawn's won for for color purple. purple. Yeah. Uh, and the first, but the first one, I mean, um, Sada yep. Ramirez. Sada Ramirez, yes. That was my first one. But gosh, I, I didn't care what happened that year. I was, I'm nominated. Like I was just dan you know, yeah. dancing. on. But it was fun. It was kind of interesting because I never really, I always kind of knew beforehand that I wouldn't. Right. So right. it was always easy. Right. You know, it's always been a joyful, easy night right. Right. of celebration. Right. And to be honest, I, did I say to be honest 1,700 times in this last five minutes, or do you need to cut some of those out? You can keep being honest. Because, geez, what, what, uh, it's, a, it's a sticky subject, so I, I think I say that just to make, it's the way that everyone back home can see me, because I'm not on television or film that much, right. so it's kind of like the thing that my Aunt Tootie looks forward to for four years, yeah, you yeah, know, right. every year. Right. Well, if she's not on the Tonys, then I can't see her, so I'm, <laughs> I'm obligated to get nominated for a Tony, at least, you know, so. You have admitted in the past that you're very competitive. 
I'm a competitive person. So you, do you have like charts at home about this year's races? <laughs> no. you, like we do upstairs. I mean, do you have like a horse race? No, but that's where it gets. That's where I get in my. Way, I don't get in my way because I, um, I feel like that gets in. I feel like that gets in in my mind. Yeah. So I really don't even know. I try not to because otherwise I don't want to think about that. I just want to do my show. Right. What I do know for sure is if I weren't in the race and didn't, you know, want to win something, it would be a travesty if Jesse Mueller didn't. To be honest. To be honest. You she's like, she's like a that. badass. Yeah. yeah. She's a badass. And I love her. And she's my friend. And I was torn up by her. I mean, I just was rocked by her performance. Well, yeah. we have a favorite. Kelly O'Hara, favorite in the race. Yeah. Um, so how's that adorable family of yours? So adorable. Uh, what, Owen and Charlotte? Owen and Charlotte. Right? And, of course, Greg, your husband. Uh, if you're a very busy woman, everyone talks about this, like you're a, mo you're a working mom and you're on Broadway and you're doing all this. So if, here, here's what I want to say. If I could like, right in the moment, like if I could help you do one thing, what would you need me to do? Like if you're just like, hey, Paul, can you just do that? I need to do that. For my I, family? Is there anything on your like, to-do list I can just take care of for you? Oh, gosh. Um, well, today I needed Owen to be taken to swimming and Charlotte needed to be fed because she's just started solids because she just had peas today for the first time. So you could have maybe given her some for peas. Yeah, I could do that. And, and then milk, ha milk first, then peas, then the rest of the milk, and then nap time. But you need to change your diaper first. Um, oh, mine. But actually, if you're really asking, Greg could leave. You could go. You could put them both to bed, which is quite detailed, um, uh, so that Greg and I could come. and he You can could, go out after the show. He could meet me after the show because it's my early night, so we could actually oh, go I'm out. Oh, I'm totally, totally Please babysitter. Please go to my house. Can't do it tonight. Sorry. <laughs> maybe, maybe another time. I'll let you know. <laughs> I almost had a little bit of excitement there. Almost, <laughs> we're going to have a date. Here's what amazes me about you. Okay. You are so busy. and Every time you're in a show, I always know, like, the next two shows, one or two oh. shows you're doing. <laughs> I feel like actresses would like kill to have to have that sort oh. of position. You know what I mean? I mean, you must yeah, feel I, like I, pretty I, great. Sure. I mean, believe me, when I, I remember very well not knowing what's coming next. Yeah, I want to talk about that. Hating it. Let's make everybody. Because I don't want people to not like you and think like, oh, look at Kelly O'Hara. Like, <laughs> oh, her I'm life. sure the haters are there. Look at her life. She just get like, uh, look at her Tony nominations and one shot to the next. So let's sort of like make everyone feel a little better. All right. Let's talk about the dark years. What was like the, what was dark like the darkest years. point in your career where you thought, I don't even know if this is going to happen? Yeah. The dark years, like writing your rent from, your, from the, uh, like the MasterCard checks they send you in the mail oh. and actually trying to write your rent check off of that, uh -huh. like those kind of dark years. <laughs> um, no, like I, I was one of those people who um, had long blonde hair and sang soprano and so came right out of the gate with non-union and, and booked a job, you mm -hmm. know, booked a job. Right. So, ooh, it's gonna, life's going to be great, you know. Um, what was that job? A, a production of Something's Afoot in Sugarloaf, New York, Why not? which then led me to the Downtown Cabaret Theater at the Bridgeport, yep. you know, and then I got my card and then I went into Jekyll and Hyde on okay. the road. But when I got back from Jekyll and Hyde on the road and I went into Jekyll and Hyde on Broadway, yeah. um, all of this doesn't sound too bad so far, but what happened after that was I didn't work. I, di I didn't get, um, I remember going in for I wanted to go in for Oklahoma, but I wasn't all of a sudden, for the first time in my whole life, they're going to do a ballerina as Laurie instead of, you know. Oh, right. <laughs> so I, you know, I couldn't even get seen. I had eight callbacks for Nessa Rose in oh, Wicked. Oh, really? The original? In my, in my, wow. in my uh, wheelchair. You would have been in your chair. Eight callbacks. Boy, I thought that I was going to get that part. Huh. But the thing is, is that for all the theater that I've gotten to do, which is what I came here to do, I'll tell you about a million television auditions where I put my makeup on and, and blew my hair out straight and went into the auditions and had them say, you know, oh, well, we really don't have costumes for size four. Mm. You know, we don't really usually have size four <laughs> pants or, or, um, or whatever my size was that was too big for what they're used to or, or well, she's too old or she's not pretty enough or um, you get two seconds to read something and you're not mm -hmm. as pretty as the other blonde in the room. You know, being blonde is really hard in television because if you're not a bombshell, then you might as well. So um, it's not like I have not, you know, wanted things that I didn't right. get. Right. You know, if you've played so many of the like great classic roles, I mean, it's really crazy how many of them yeah. you've been able to sort of like yeah. check off your list. You did My Fair Lady, yeah. you did Carousel, which is one of my favorite shows. That's you know, those are the not on Broadway, and then all the Broadway stuff. 
I wonder if like who there must be girls that are like, oh, is Kelly gonna? Oh, really? Like, I'm well, wondering about that batch of girls. <laughs> oh, who are please! Like, I want a chance to like. It's not play. always that way. I mean, look, <laughs> Benanti knows this. We've laughed about it, but I mean, my whole first ten years here was like, ugh, I didn't get this because Benanti got it. You know, is, what is I mean, Benanti like, like your black swan. She I was, was always that. my black. Yeah, you know, everything. <laughs> I, because she was already way like I got here and she was already on Broadway at right. eighteen years old. You right, know, and right. I was older than that. I was older than her. And so it's always, you always have somebody. I mean. So she's on the bench next to you. And there's always someone I'll never catch up to. I'll never catch up to Audra. Who will? You know, <laughs> nor do I think I should. It's just, um, but but at the same time, those people have, um, have totally, like, pulled me with their, like, I'm totally inspired to, like, yes, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm trying. I'm, I'm yeah. going to keep working so that I can, you know, you asked me about this year, like, who's doing stuff. And I kind of want to pinch myself at the fact that I can call them friends. But someone like Maren Maisie, yeah. oh my God, I used to watch Ragtime when I first moved here yeah. and dream of being that person. And she knows, I've told her a thousand times this now. And to call her a friend now. Um, and then Jesse, who's come up, mm -hmm. and me go, wow, you know, that there's, mm -hmm. there's room for all of us, hopefully, and we mm -hmm. can all be here. But it's, um, but yeah, we always have those people. The grass is always greener. Maybe you and Laura could like split a role. We can split you know, a like, role, like yeah. Perform four performances a week each, and then <laughs> please. You can see your I know, kids I know for a fact that the two of us would welcome that any day. <laughs> Absolutely, four shows a week. Woo! <laughs> Bring it on. In fact, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah. So just to give ourselves the lives that we want. Yeah, let's let's work on that. I yes. like that idea. Splitting Larb and Auntie, we're splitting a role. Which, like what really role? soon. What role do you want to split with our? Waitress Sarah Bareilles is going to write it. We're going to do it. That music, the, the musical. <laughs> it's yours. I'm just kidding. I'm not. Kidding. I'm not. <laughs> trying to take it from you. But we could split it. We could split it and then have a life. Oh, I didn't know she was doing it. She's doing it, but you Well, she it. did the workshops. Okay. You no, but I just met Sarah the other night, came to the show. Yeah, I know. I love her. Yeah? I love her. She said that we could do the lesbian bridges of Madison County. Oh. And I said... And you first welcome of all, that. First See that? of all, there you go. say that I'm not... I am the first female kiss on, on t television. Daytime television. Oh, on the soap? Yep. What soap were you on? I was on uh, All My Children. And yeah, you I, Bianca, and I, <laughs> Bianca and I kissed, and it was the first time. Wow. I, I didn't, I, I'm sorry I didn't know that. I didn't do I'm my research. I'm really sorry that wow. you uh, don't Is know on my side. Uh, I don't know if it's on it's, Nobody cared. Can we? <laughs> <laughs> but you're asking me. How do you me know you were the first? Like, did the writers th say, like, this like, is it, yes, we're doing it? the first, it. like. You're yeah. a lesbian icon. I'm telling you. I had no idea you were a lesbian Just icon for all those All My Children viewers. Move over, Ellen. Was there any tongue? There was not tongue, but it was it was sex hot, is what it okay. was. Okay, okay, it was like just as hot as. And I was the inst I instigated it. You know, I had I had oh. the hand on the face. I can do it. Why? <laughs> so Sarah Burrell, anytime you're ready. King and I's happening, right? I, th I think. I mean, I've I mean, been hearing this for like years. It's it's in talks. I mean, I, nothing's Good. been confirmed or announced. Lincoln Center has to do that when they're ready. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Did you come up with a dream? King yet? King of Siam? I think there's some good ideas. Oh, good, yeah. good ideas. Exciting ones. Brewing. Exciting yeah. ideas. Yep. Roger Hammerstein's are my favorite musicals, so well, so I love that you're like checking them off. Good. Sound of Music? Like, you know, it's the only, that's the one that got away. I maybe, never got no, maybe it. like in the later years you could do mother, The Mother Abbess, right? Yeah, maybe so. We'll do that. Maybe we'll get to so. that eventually. Yeah. Book that for like 20, 2025, 2026 20 season. <laughs> we'll, we'll get that in the books. You know what I might do? I might, by that time, who knows? I might be... Uh, I might be setting up shop somewhere, teaching voice lessons. I don't know. Oh, really? I don't know. Can you picture yourself ever going like, you know what, I'm just going to take like five years off. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can picture it. Yeah. But I do know that I'll never, gosh, i got to keep keep going somehow. But I can picture it because yeah. I, I need it. I need some time right. for my kids. And, you know, I, I'm not going to be the mom who misses every game, every right. concert. Mm -mm. Right. Nope. Not me. Well, for right now, you're missing games. Or maybe you're not. But you're in the prison of Madison County. Yes. And uh, I'm telling you. Like, you really have to see this show. Those fireworks on stage are incredible, and I don't just say that. So I, I hope I'm very proud of it. I, I really want people to come. I think it's the way theater should be done. Yeah. And the album comes out April 15th, and everyone should go to the Schoenfeld Theater and see the Bridges of Madison County. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm so glad you for uh, me. gracing my white pleather with your, with your beauty. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Thanks. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.